Right, what about multiple linear regression in R? So the only difference between multiple linear regression and linear regression is that I've got more than one independent variables. And I am going to go in my time machine here and go all the way back to week five in a distant past as far as I'm concerned. And I'm going to refresh your memory about the, the mega mush data set that you use for your assessment that week. And at the end of that chapter, um, in week five, there was a, a subsection called Just for Fun. And I had generated a really cool, even if I do say so myself, a three-dimensional plot using Plotly and my data so I could see the, you know, the immediate effect of both temperature and moisture, so there are my two independent variables, on my viable bacterial counts. That's my dependent variable. Okay, and what you can see here is um, if I had just plotted one variable, let's say if I just did temperature, so I've got temperature on my x-axis and VBC on my y-axis, then actually I can't, it, I, could, I could put a straight line through this data, but it wouldn't fit every single data point. Um, likewise, if I wanted to do um, moisture, if I bring that around like that um, as a function of VBC, then I could put a straight line through this, but I've got this extra group down here which wouldn't be on that line. And that's because the truth is, I'm not trying to, I don't want to fit a straight line, I want to fit a plane, okay? All right? Um, so some uh, two-dimensional shape, um, a plane, to this data, instead of a one-dimensional one, which is the straight line. And you can see that this plane will cut through all of these data sets, uh, data points, Mm -hmm. in some position, okay? You can imagine uh, the edge of this plane coming down through here, okay? Okay, that's, it's tricky to visualize it in uh, 3D, but that's exactly what we're gonna do with a multiple linear regression. We're going to essentially find the equation of this plane. Uh, so that'll be, think of it as a, a straight line um, equation, but with an extra term in it, which will um, tell me uh, both the the temperature and the moisture coefficients, the slopes for both of those, okay? Right, how on earth do we go about doing that? Well, I think we're gonna have to re-engineer what we've already got. So here's my R, here's what. Here's here's that graph again. Actually, it looks a bit easier to handle down there. Um, in my chapter this week, I haven't bothered with actually calculating viable bacterial counts. I'm asking you to um, predict just the viable count, okay? So we don't need to calculate uh, that column for VBC. Um, so you're gonna have to go back and re-engineer the script. Um, actually, we don't really, you don't really need to plot this. So what I'm going to do is just go ahead and do my linear regression here. Um, so the data frame that I've used here is called data. Perform. MLR, and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create another linear model uh, called uh, compost, and I'm going to do something very similar that I've just done for the previous section, which is use this LM function to create a linear regression model. I'm going to feed in the dependent variable that I want. Now in this case, let me just check uh, my data frame I am going to use this viable dot counts, not the VBC in this case. Um, you could do it for the VBC, but it won't help you answer the question in this week's formative and summative tests. So let's just use this as a viable with a capital V dot counts with a lowercase c. Let's stick that in there, viable dot counts. And I am interested in my temperature with a capital T. And also, I want to factor in my moisture. So you can see I've put two independent variables here. Now you recognize this, I hope. Uh, the way I've done this is completely analogous to the way I wrote my ANOVA function, my AOV function last week. It's very, very similar. You'll, you'll notice that I'm missing one final um, argument here. Let me just give myself a bit more space. And that is my, my data argument. 
um, in this case, data is just data. I've been very, very lazy with my data variable name there, so forgive me for that. Control and enter. Uh, done. Let's look at the summary. And let's check out our console. Here we go. This is it. Uh, I've got my coefficients. So my intercept, um, it's still going to hit my um, my my y-axis, my viable counts axis at some value. Okay. But now I've got slopes for my temperature. And I've also got a slope for my moisture. Okay. So um, I've also got p-values. And for all of those, intercept, temperature, moisture, I've got very, very significant p-values. So a multiple linear regression is totally appropriate for this model, I think. Um, in fact, if I go down and look at my p-value, it's telling me that 99.42% of my dependent variable, my viable counts, is accounted for by both of these independent variables, temperature and moisture together. So I've kind of got an almost perfect model here. Again, totally unrealistic. I've engineered the data. Forgive me for that. Um, however, if you do perform a linear model in future, you'll probably notice that the more independent variables you add, the higher this R squared value gets. Now that might not be a real effect, um, which is why we have this adjusted R squared as well. So this adjusted R squared, think of this as like the equivalent of a Bonferroni um, adjustment for a linear model instead of a, an ANOVA. Okay, we need to make sure we're not getting any um, type errors here uh, and, and sort of imagining uh, uh, shadows in our data. Um, so, but actually, I can see here that my R squared is still very, very high. In fact, it's, it's almost equivalent to my R squared. Um, I've also got an overall p-value for the model, which again is ridiculously low. That's fantastic. And there's my corresponding F statistic there. So what can I do now? How am I going to predict a value for my viable counts using this? Well, this is just one, you know, it's multi-dimensional um, straight line function. Okay. In fact, it's not a straight line. It's a plane. Okay, that's what you've, you've calculated here. Um, now, there is an easier way to get that out, and I'm not going to tell you how to do it. Uh, I'm going to encourage you to Google or ChatGPT, how do I predict a value using a multiple linear regression output? So a couple of ways you can do that. I'm actually going to show you how I would do this. Let's, let's just copy this. Right? Let's be totally upfront with ChatGPT. Um, where is my ChatGPT gone? There he is. Let's bring it over here. And I'm going to say, here is my summary of a multiple linear regression uh, using R. Okay. Paste that in. How could I predict the viable counts for... Um, a new pair of temperature moisture values question mark enter let's see what it does okay so this is all right taking this time mm -hmm. probably giving more than we need oh it's going to give us some code Uh, there you go. Right, so there's two examples there. Um, I love that the fact that it's actually given me my equation, examples of how to do this in R. This is, I think, the, the hard way um, by substituting all of those equations, um, coefficients in, and then calculating it using this equation here. Um, so this is essentially a linear equation with your intercepts, your coefficient for temperature, and then the temperature and then your coefficient for the moisture, and then multiplied by the moisture, and then you get this finally in, final interactive t interaction term here as well, which is actually very, very small because there doesn't appear to be a big interaction effect. Um, this would be the hard way. There's something called predict in R. Now, I'm going to quickly not show you that because that's how I would do it, right? So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to encourage you to figure this out for yourself. 
On this occasion, I'm very, very happy for you to collaborate and share what you're doing. At the end of the day, you will know whether you've got it right or not because you can use the formative test to check your answers. Okay, so you should perform that formative test over and over again until you cannot get it wrong. And you've got a, a working script that can do this over and over again. All you'll have to do is substitute in a new data set every time you do it. And uh, there you go. So I'm, I'm taking the training wheels off your R now. I'm not going to be so kind and giving you all the code. I'm going to start expecting you to Google it, ChatGPT it. Again, I'm going to add all of the disclaimers um, the usual disclaimers for using ChatGPT. Uh, I strongly recommend that you don't uh, use it to generate all of your code, okay? Um, and if you do use it to generate code, uh, also use it to understand it. So if you don't understand something it's told you how to do, chuck it back in and say, what does this mean? That's a really good and uh, effective way to use ChatGPT to learn how to code. Uh, so I strongly recommend you try and do that. Any questions, of course, I'll be in the workshop channel this week. So will the team. Don't be afraid to take a screenshot, check it in. Why isn't this working? Show us all your lovely errors. We love them. We love you getting your errors. Um, they, uh, my team is extremely competitive in trying to get you as quickly as possible on the Thursday morning to answer your questions. So do use that resource if you if you start to struggle with your code. Okay, thanks, everybody. And I will see you next week.